Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Konstantin Koshchkin. I'm associate professor in Sechenov University Institute of Digital Health, and uh, I am presenting uh, lectures on uh, discipline IT technologies and e-health. And today we continue with a topic about uh, medical information systems. We will cover uh, general information about this area, goals, why uh, medical information systems or another world, world is uh, hospital information systems are being used, so which tasks are they solving, what are their structure, how they are being implemented, uh, different types of systems, standards uh, using in this area, and of course we will cover electronic health records which are being used in these systems. Let's start with short overview about uh, digital healthcare in general. Why this topic is so important? Uh, we have uh, growing demand in health uh, services in healthcare system, and it's related to several studies uh, showing that our population will grow and uh, it will become older, and demand for medical care will eventually. Uh, race and uh, we will need additional tools to help to provide these uh, services and uh, tasks for uh, digital solutions here are to provide resources to aim these resources on prevention measures on early detection of uh, diseases uh, it's important to create uh, interdisciplinary teams to battle these challenges uh, of course, it will be required to monitor conditions of uh, um, wide groups of uh, patients and uh, provide algorithms to automate some of the processes. And uh, uh, another study shows that uh, it's possible to save uh, right now if we implement dif different uh, digital solutions, we are able to save up to 10% of uh, expenses on healthcare. And uh, it's quite good discount. And uh, these solutions help uh, not only healthcare system, but uh, our patients also providing uh, these uh, services in more comfortable and effective way. So it is a win-win situation. If we once again get back to um, World Health Organization recommendations, we will find that uh, there are also uh, points related to digital systems and uh, WHO recommend us to implement digital solutions for trainings of uh, healthcare professionals to uh, increase their qualification and uh, eventually to enable them providing better healthcare services. But of course, it's not a replacement of traditional uh, health education, and uh, it will just be as uh, addition for um, our students. Of course, uh, there is a wide possibilities to use mobile devices and uh, different uh, solutions related to Internet of Things to monitor healthcare conditions in our patients, and. Uh, in many cases, they are related to telemedicine. Uh, another area of uh, WHO recommendations are about uh, funding and organization of these services. And uh, the next area will be related to artificial intelligent implementation in uh, providing decision support for healthcare professionals, monitoring tools, and all this area of activities. Uh, we can add that uh, there is a growing demand from our patients in uh, enabling access for them for their medical data and there was a study in Europe showing that uh, more than 65% of patients were uh, interested in uh, having access to their medical data uh, online and uh, they are not afraid of uh, uh, confidentiality issues. 
Uh, when we talk about uh, medical data, we should consider that it is very specific uh, and uh, in many cases unstructured information. Actually, uh, we should say that it's not totally unstructured, but it's vary in structure, amount, uh, different types of formats. Uh, for example, uh, in area of medical data, we have uh, medical images, medical video clips, uh, uh, different signals from, uh, uh, for example, uh, cardiography uh, measurements and uh, in many cases we will have additional text information to this uh, data and uh, uh, right now we have uh, sophisticated tools constructing uh, computer models for different situations and of course it will require different types of data storage so uh, we can say that we have a mixed type of data and uh, uh, this format is uh, generally related to big data area in general. So we have uh, different sources, different uh, types of data, large amounts of data. This data will grow uh, from day to day. And uh, in many cases, we have uh, data being gathered uh, without any um, uh, pauses in uh, data collection when we have uh, some wearable devices on our patients and we receive this information uh, every second, for example. And of course, we will need uh, to consider how this uh, information uh, should be stored, uh, which should be uh, different uh, storages, uh, processing tools. Uh, so uh, we will totally need uh, infrastructure under this data and uh, reliable standards. Let's get back uh, one step and uh, take a look what should we call medical data. Uh, in general, it is a uh, wide uh, group of information which could be specifically addressed to the uh, certain person. So uh, it is always personal data and uh, in, uh, um, I guess, uh, majority of the cases, this uh, data will be very sensitive. And uh, uh, in each country we have legislation and uh, this legislation demand us to provide additional security measures to store this data uh, to contains this uh, confidentiality for our patients. So we always have a subject of information. It's our person uh, whose medical data we are storing. And on the other hand, we have operator responsible for this data processing and storage. And uh, our um, subjects need to agree uh, to provide this data to be processed. And uh, we need to define uh, for which goals we are gathering this data. For example, it could be uh, clinical decision support systems, which are computer-based programs that analyze data in electronic health records to provide prompt and uh, uh, reminders, uh, prompts and reminders for um, medical assistance for healthcare providers, uh, providing second opinions, for example, uh, clinical guidance uh, in uh, some procedures. And uh, in these systems, we need to consider that uh, uh, sources of information for them are private, confident, uh, these uh, tools uh, must be user-friendly because uh, uh, doctors do not have time to work with complicated tools with uh, difficult interfaces. They should be integratable with other systems because uh, we need a source to provide uh, initial information for this decision-making. Uh, and uh, only uh, having all this in place, we could implement such a systems in practice. Uh, what are the problems of uh, such a systems in nowadays? Of course, it will be high variability of biological data uh, and uh, eventually we'll have uh, very complicated uh, 
systems uh, themselves and uh, processes behind uh, this solution will be not easy to uh, describe for um, users of the systems. Uh, all current uh, AI-based solutions in medicine are highly specialized, so it's impossible for us uh, to create a unified uh, decision support system, uh, such a so-called in media replacement for doctor. It's impossible right now. We need an actual doctor combining all the knowledge in the healthcare in general, and only in specialized areas so we can add such a computer uh, system to aid doctor to uh, make better decisions on this uh, uh, exact uh, point of uh, knowledge. And uh, we do, do not have a unified uh, characteristics of the system, so it's impossible for us to say that the system could help in every cases and for every disease will have uh, uh, characteristics of the system uh, dependent on the exact model uh, loaded in the system and this model will be actual only for a small group of patients conditions and uh, maybe in any some cases uh, area of application on uh, exact territory for example in machine learning uh, we work uh, with large amounts of uh, initial data to train our systems and uh, we can have a statistical uh, provable statistically provable results and the when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence uh, in uh, uh, major um, architectures of the system, we will have uh, unprovable results with only uh, statistical measures. We are sure we, sh we will be sure that the system work with a certainty of ninety eight percent, for example. But it's impossible for us to check if this uh, result uh, was made correctly or not. We need to trust uh, this system. It's the uh, only way currently. And uh, right now we're talking about implementation of uh, such a system in, uh, of course, uh, decision support. Uh, they could be used in personalization when we analyze uh, all the personal data from exact patient and provide most suitable uh, recommendations or diagnostics exactly for him. Uh, these uh, algorithms could be connected uh, to um, specific uh, physical systems, for example, uh, some analytical tools or, or uh, instruments. Uh, for example, it could be some types of scanners uh, or maybe laboratory analyzing tools or something like that. Uh, also, artificial intelligence could be used in routing and logistics, uh, for example, to manage uh, ambulances to manage uh, load on uh, healthcare professionals, healthcare organizations in general. Uh, they could be used to optimize processes on the general level, uh, providing uh, insights for high-level management uh, and, uh, of course, to analyze uh, epidemiological situations in, uh, uh, high, uh, in large groups of uh, population. Uh, what could we show as uh, examples for implemented solutions? Of course, there are a lot of progress in medical images recognition. Uh, they being used for lung disease, different type of cancer, uh, for um, blood diseases, uh, in uh, dermatology. Uh, they could be used to monitor different states of the body as uh, addition for wearable devices to analyze data from the devices. Um, 
Of course, these tools uh, could be used uh, to manage uh, data in general. So it will be automated systems to provide uh, medical knowledge when you search for, for example, you can uh, provide, you can enter a search query for some type of disease and receive uh, most relevant publications in uh, uh, literature from a vast amount of articles uh, provided by such a system. Um, and of course, uh, healthcare monitoring for mm, general population and uh, mm, healthcare organizations. Let's take a look about the uh, automation of uh, medical organizations. Major goal for automation will be improvement of organization uh, and its uh, work processes, optimize resource planning uh, and uh, economic statistics uh, and other mm, general processes uh, which should be managed in any organization and uh, in uh, uh, many aspects uh, these systems uh, are similar with uh, enterprise resource planning uh, software solutions but uh, of course we'll have a lot of uh, specific specific goals and for example it will be electronic medical records for patients and uh, i believe that it's the most important part of medical information systems and of course uh, major goal will be to improve quality of medical services provided uh, we have several tasks to achieve these goals. Of course, it will be a creation of uh, reference information systems. So it will be different type of uh, dictionaries which could be used in uh, healthcare. It will be uh, electronic registries, timetables. So our patients will be able to make appointments with doctors uh, online. Mm maintenance of primary medical uh, documentation, gathering of this documentation, storing it, archiving, uh, providing solutions for easy search of such documents. It's also very important. Uh, another task will be uh, providing common regulations for medical organization. When we have a large organization, there always will be issues when uh, one person in this organization will provide services uh, according to his own thoughts and ideas and another person will use uh, different patterns and uh, introducing digital systems uh, will allow us to provide the uh, best practices for all services because uh, processes will be inside the system and it will be difficult to make any deviations from uh, approved processes. And of course, uh, uh, we will need to introduce uh, information technologies in general in health organizations. It's not a secret that uh, there is a lot of uh, medical organizations nowadays making records on paper and storing all medical data in uh, bookshelves. And uh, it's quite, quite impossible to work with uh, this uh, type of uh, data storage uh, right now in uh, 21st century. Um, what is medical information system or hospital information system itself? Or which uh, models does the system uh, combine? It will be um, software tool to um, manage um, a vast organization. Of course, it could be a small organization, but uh, we need to aim for a larger scale, so it will be easier for us to reduce it to the lower level. Uh, this system will have uh, reference information, subsystems uh, providing storage of all vocabularies. In general, these vocabularies should be uh, connected with uh, general ones on the state level and uh, in many cases on international level. So our um, data gathered in the system will be interchangeable and interoperable and uh, Another subsystem will be 
electronic document management when we go from paperwork to electronic uh, format we will need to convert all our documents which we create during our uh, services from paper based form to electronic based form and uh, in this process we will receive electronic documents and of course we'll need to manage them manage them um, I guess most of the systems uh, right now will have uh, tools for decision support. Uh, electronic medical records, of course, will arrange all the information related to the patient in the organization, in the medical organization, receiving when our patients receive medical help. <clears throat> uh, there are SIP systems specific for, specific for uh, research organizations, for monitoring uh, of the conditions of our patients, uh, some types of uh, financial management subsystems uh, and other. We will take a look on them in details. Let's check uh, what are the basic requirements uh, which are being uh, provided to software tool developer uh, when we need uh, to create a new system or when we need to purchase existing system for medical organization. Of course, it will be a requirement that the system is easy to operate, easy to maintain, easy to install. Uh, nobody wants to work with complicated system. Uh, in many cases, we need to adopt uh, this uh, information management system to the specifics of uh, medical organizations. And in many cases, we have requirements for adaptability of uh, these software solutions. Another requirement will be um, possibilities to connect with uh, unified reference information sources Next will be automation of uh, document management, uh, document control tools and uh, business process uh, creation, workflow creation tools. So uh, in many cases, our documents will need to pass different stages of preparation. Of course, uh, all the documents uh, we need to store and uh, we need uh, digital archives, electronic archives to store this information. And uh, there are a lot of additional requirements for document storages and uh, they are more technical than organizational. For example, it will be backups, uh, power supplies additionally pr uh, provided uh, and something like that additional um, network connections. <clears throat> In many cases, our medical organizations are distributed uh, geographically. Uh, it means that we have different parts of this organization in different uh, locations and our software system needs to support this uh, organization structure. Uh, of course, it's impossible to store all medical data in structured way. So in many cases, we will have uh, structured uh, majority of data, but uh, we'll need to be able to add something in free text format uh, as a additional description of the situation. So no, we'll need uh, possibilities to process unstructured information. Another requirement will be flexibility on uh, rights control in the system because, of course, there will be different types of uh, data access uh, and, uh, uh, for example, uh, not uh, all um, employees need to have access to all uh, medical records of the patients. Of course, it should be restricted to, uh, for example, one department or even one doctor. <clears throat> uh, in many cases, we have uh, centralized systems in healthcare in country and uh, we need to connect uh, our medical information system with uh, existing healthcare software solutions. 
uh, if we go from paper-based documents to digital documents uh, we will need to sign them in digital form so we will need to have a possibility to provide digital signature in the system of course so we will need to be sure that uh, our medical data is securely is being securely stored and uh, we need uh, measures for security in the system uh, what else can i name i guess we covered major requirements and uh, i will add only that uh, uh, it's good when the system work on the uh, commonly used standards it's we'll talk later about uh, which standards are currently popular in uh, healthcare data exchange uh, but uh, when we talk about software system itself uh, we should consider not only data standards but uh, software provision standards also in uh, uh, we have uh, standards for um, uh, software solutions development, testing, validation, and uh, uh, how we should measure, uh, should keep our um, electronic uh, entries and how the signatures should be done. So uh, all these issue issues are standardized and uh, we can use these common standards as a baseline for software development and implementation. Uh, what are the major parts of uh, medical information systems? It will be resource management, uh, telemedicine subsystem, uh, economical systems, statistical systems, uh, electronic medical records, and uh, in many cases we will need to have a portal so our patients will be able to access our resources in the system. Uh, let's take a look in more detail what are the subcomponents of these uh, major parts of medical information system. In resource management, we will have uh, accounting, uh, subsystems, uh, logistics uh, to keep our um, medical equipment in order or something like that. We will have uh, pharmacy, accounting and logistics. Uh, it will be systems uh, to calculate costs of our services, scheduling tools, uh, contract management tools, uh, what else, document management we can name here, uh, personal records for medical health professionals, uh, vehicles management if we have uh, ambulance, in our organization. In the uh, statistical part of the system we will have uh, um, tools to provide uh, reports uh, on uh, different type of uh, diseases, uh, um, discharged and uh, uh, patients in our health organization, uh, immunoprophylactics, of what else medical examinations mm, how many medical products are provided to the patients uh, emergency rooms and something uh, like that uh, in medical records we will have all the information uh, related to the exact patient it will be uh, records about examinations it will be um, pathology anatomical activities, uh, drugs dispense, um, clinical work, uh, registries for patients, different uh, recorded protocols for treatment. It will be information related to uh, different types of uh, examinations it will be uh, laboratory um, examinations uh, radiological examinations uh, medical images related to the patient and uh, uh, all the other types of data which could be used for exact patient 
when we talk about uh, diversity of uh, medical information systems there is a very vast area of different type of solutions there are a lot of uh, free to use uh, solutions uh, and uh, uh, lots of solutions provided uh, on the payment basis and uh, of course uh, this uh, uh, type of uh, solution should be choose uh, related to the general politics in healthcare in the specific country. Let's take a look on uh, uh, standard uh, user stories and uh, which types of services are being provided. Uh, in uh, ambulatory uh, support, we will have uh, workplaces in the system for all the um, relevant positions in organization. It will be registration, doctors, uh, uh, of course, uh, support personnel in marketing, uh, contracts, uh, call centers, uh, and uh, uh, other. And um, in, in the system, we will have uh, patient records, uh, we will be able to attach uh, patients to medical organization, personalize uh, accounting for exact patient, uh, manage his activities, uh, print disability certificates, uh, manage his electronic records, uh, provide data registration in uh, automatization uh, call center we uh, automatization tool in call center and so on in uh, major hospital activities uh, we will additionally have uh, uh, different posts for um, nurses for example we will have uh, uh, dispatching uh, groups for ambulances and uh, so on. In uh, our process, we'll have uh, beds management, uh, funding for these activities, different types of uh, different types of reports. Uh, how many patients were uh, hospitalized, uh, who refused hospitalization, discharges of patients, etc. In pharmacies, we'll have, of course, accounting, uh, measurement for uh, movement, uh, control for movement of medicines, different uh, components for storage automation in many cases it will be labeling for medical products so it will be easier to find where this uh, exact product is stored and uh, we'll just be able to check uh, with bar scanner his uh, barcode and uh, this uh, dispense will be automated of course uh, this Prescriptions are easily automated from uh, doctor's uh, workplace to the pharmacist workplace and uh, no paper-based document will be needed inside the hospital. Additionally, we are able to provide uh, um, retail sales for medical products to patients and uh, it will be a uh, different process uh, related to uh, financial issues and uh, it is also being managed in medical information system model related to pharmacy. Uh, of course, we'll have uh, components for laboratory uh, services and uh, we need to keep all uh, journals in digital form and uh, we need to be sure that nothing was changed in these journals and uh, uh, of course it could be done in digital form. Uh, we will have uh, tools to integrate uh, measurement tools in the laboratory and uh, if it's impossible to provide uh, cap possibility for uh, laboratory manager to enter results in the system.
In many cases, uh, healthcare system require um, information about uh, services in medical organization to be provided as a reports and uh, uh, without medical information systems, it is a very difficult work for our uh, specialists uh, providing these statistics and uh, using these uh, reporting tools in medical information system, we could automate this process and uh, it will become very easy to provide such a reports. And uh, of course, uh, we will have uh, issues related to um, kitchen, uh, how we cook food, what are the components, uh, which patient need to uh, receive which type of food related to his uh, uh, personal requirements related to his health. Of course, it will be uh, components and processes related to personal management, uh, salary, billing, uh, contracts, and all these issues. When we have uh, everything automated on the level of uh, one medical organization, we could, could uh, go higher to the regional level. In uh, regional, uh, on the regional level, we'll have uh, regional medical information systems, and uh, this type of solutions uh, receive uh, uh, all the required data from medical organizations and uh, provide decision-making uh, tools for um, uh, healthcare management on this level of um, government structure. The key goal here is to increase patient satisfaction through use of digital technologies and to improve quality of medical care. The key tasks here will be uh, digitalization of uh, services delivery, improvement of diagnostics, improvement on uh, interaction between medical organizations and patients, implementation of uh, tools for managing management in healthcare to manage data to manage processes equipping healthcare facilities with the necessary digital infrastructure and implementing uh, processes and technologies for collecting and analyzing medical data and of course uh, we'll need to provide our uh, medical organizations with uh, highly qualified medical personnel Main step, steps in introduction of uh, regional information management systems in healthcare will be uh, analysis of uh, current situation in the region, achievements, barriers, opportunities. Uh, we need to find objects of automation and interested persons who will gain benefits from implementation of such a tools. Uh, we need to define what will be key performance indicators in this area. Uh, we need to identify priorities in our work, create a portfolio of uh, initiatives or cases which could be shown that uh, they are solved and we received uh, such a result. We need to define responsibilities, uh, who will do which part of work, and of course, uh, define financial resources. When we have uh, high-scale uh, medical information systems, uh, we can issue different projects. For example, in Moscow region, we had a project related to radiological studies, gathering all the processed data on medical images related to radiology and all this uh, annotated medical images were used to train decision support system, which currently are being used uh, to provide uh, additional um, opinion for medical professionals providing radiological research and investigations. A similar solution was used in uh, COVID pandemic and uh, this tool was providing uh, insights for CT scans uh, and uh, uh, results in the system uh, became uh, more agile than the results provided by persons and uh, 
uh, in this exact uh, narrow area of uh, activity, uh, we can show that artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence provide better results than uh, people, and it's quite interesting. Let's talk a bit about uh, reference information in uh, healthcare. Uh, I will start with uh, registry of uh, medical products and uh, uh, this registry is specific for one country because uh, in general uh, there are limitations which medical products could be used in uh, exact country and uh, which are not and uh, to enable medical products to be used in one country we need to pass the process of registration to confirm that this product is uh, safe efficient and uh, its quality is on the high level and <clears throat> only after this registration procedure or information about medical product will be added to the registry in this registry we store a uh, trade uh, name of this product international generic or grouping name of this product or its chemical name if there is no international name for it uh, dosage form indicating uh, dosage of medical product and quantity in which it will be packed. Uh, also, there will be stored name of the owner of this product who will be responsible for its production. And of course, uh, where is uh, this production line located? Because uh, our license to um, produce certain medical product uh, is uh, issued to the exact location of the manufacturer. There will be different uh, identifiers uh, from uh, classifications which could be used, for example, in uh, uh, different um, decision support systems uh, and it will be a pharmacotherapeutic group for anatomotherapeutic chemical classification and others uh, additionally we'll have uh, contradictions uh, indications side effects there will be um, information about uh, how long this product could be stored in which conditions it could be stored, uh, how this product could be dispensed, uh, information about quality control, um, when this product was registered uh, for medical use, so when we can start to use this product. Uh, of course, we will have information, detailed information about uh, components uh, and uh, which structures are. Um, uh, which substances are uh, in this product. Uh, we'll have information about packaging, in which type of package this product will be sold. We'll have uh, different uh, lists, uh, for example, it could be narcotics, uh, is this drug uh, orphan or not, uh, and something like that. Uh, in uh, Nowadays we have uh, procedures uh, to consider uh, if one generic drug could be used as a replacement for original product. And uh, in this case uh, we'll need to have information about uh, referential medical products uh, with which uh, manufacturer need to compare his own generic product. And uh, based on this information, we will have uh, data on interchangeability of medical products. So uh, we will be able to find which uh, drug we, will, we can replace with another one and which is not possible to replace. <coughs> uh, another type of... Uh, mm, Referential information will be international dictionaries. Uh, most important of them are SNOMED, uh, systematic medical nomenclature, clinical terms in this uh, dictionary. It is uh, machine processable medical nomenclature for, for all the uh, terminology. Another one is uh, LOINC, it's logical observation, identification and codes. Uh, it's a database of uh, universal and uh, 
identifiable medical terms to be used in medical information systems. And the third one is uh, Medra. It's a dictionary for safety information in general. It's related to adverse events, classification, and uh, how they are controlled on different types of uh, market circulation of the medical product. Another important dictionary is a classificator for diseases and it's called International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health prob Problems and it is, I guess, the most commonly used one and uh, there are codes in this classifier for the most of existing types of uh, diseases. This list is being reviewed by World Health Organization and links to this classifier facilitate data exchange in different area. In, uh, um, I guess, uh, most of the cases uh, on the data structure, um, Backbone will have uh, XML format. XML, it is a data structure which is at the same time readable by human and could be easily opened in a browser or as a web page and uh, on the same at the same time uh, this data could be read by read by uh, information system for data exchange process so this is a format which is suitable as for humans and uh, for information systems at the same time. Uh, it's a basic text structure with text and uh, uh, it could be easily um, changed, uh, adapted for different standard changes and uh, is uh, very flexible. For data exchange, a major group of standards is being called Health Level 7 or HL7. It's the set of uh, international standards to transfer clinical and administrative data between software applications by various healthcare providers. It is high level standard and uh, it didn't go deep in uh, data exchange formats, so it's easy to implement it on the software product label. One of the major parts of the standard will be electronic health record, record related structure. And uh, another most important uh, will be clinical data architecture or CDA. Uh, this format uh, aim in the preservation of uh, uh, all clinical data management uh, of this data uh, authentication of the source of this data, uh, managing context, how this data was gathered, managing integrity of this data. It uh, preserves possibility to be able uh, to provide it in readable format, so the CD file could be opened easily by person, not only information systems. And uh, we have uh, additional possibilities to store external information, for example, images, PDF files, and, and other in this format. Uh, of course, there will be a specific format for popular, popular type of uh, examinations. For example, in uh, cardio diagram, we'll have a specific type of format uh, aimed on this measurement. And uh, if we need to view this uh, data gathered in this format, we will have uh, additional tools which could be used. We do not need uh, to use a complicated um, healthcare management system to just uh, be able to view one um, uh, examination. In uh, medical images, we will have uh, digital imaging and uh, communication in medicine uh, standard DICOM. It is a standard format to receive medical uh, images. It is most commonly used to store, transmit and transmit uh, medical images. 
it uh, enable additional possibilities to uh, measure different parts of uh, these images and it's integrated with uh, so-called fax or picture archiving and communication systems which are being used in hospitals to store these medical images in DICOM format. So using this format we enable our software <coughs> systems to exchange medical images uh, from one system to another. DICOM file uh, is an uh, uh, object-oriented file with text organization. It uh, contains uh, information about patient, uh, study, uh, series, and uh, it could store not uh, just one medical image, but a series of these uh, images, so um, containing the whole study, study of the exact um, patient. Taking a, a higher look on all the medical uh, standards in uh, data, data exchange, you know, we can find that uh, there are a lot of uh, different specialized components and uh, they are uh, impossible to be replaced with just one standard because uh, we have a very vast area of uh, mm, uh, data sources and uh, uh, the main idea is to provide interoperability between different standards and to combine them in one software solution. So uh, in many cases our software solutions in uh, hospital uh, automation will be able to manage uh, multiple standards and to convert data from one standard to another. Uh, let's take a closer look on electronic medical records. Mm. I will start with example. In uh, Moscow we have uh, uh, such a um, component which enable our patients uh, to get all their own medical information on the smartphone phones. It was created as a regional medical information exchange uh, system and uh, this system um, help our patients to monitor the health indicators. Uh, they uh, are able to provide some data management measurements by their own, for example, body temperature, um, pulse level, uh, in some cases, uh, blood sugar, um, blood pressure, and uh, to keep this information in uh, this health diary and this diary will be um, accessible by the doctors. In uh, coronavirus uh, pandemics we had the possibility to enter additional data related to vaccination so it was uh, in addition a vaccination diary keeping all the changes in health after vaccination it was also be it was, it was also enabled for all the patients in moscow on the other hand we have uh, reports that only four percent of uh, medical institutions were connected uh, to or using um, electronic medical records but it was in uh, 2019 and i hope for currently this number is closer to 50%. Of course, the main problem here is uh, expenses for introduction for such a system. It will need to change you know, all the management solutions in the medical organization. So, electronic medical record uh, is a set of uh, person medical data about health of an individual presented in the form of a formalized electronic medical uh, document. It contains uh, structured uh, information related to exact person. It contains biometrics, uh, social, economic, financial, insurance data, and uh, uh, all the medical documents will be connected to this electronic medical record. This uh, record is being kept in machine-readable format to ensure, ensure that uh, 
all the information is accurate and accessible. Also, there will be all the decisions, recommendations and medical examinations for the patient. Goals of uh, electronic medical record are ensuring the continuity uh, and quality of treatment. It's a timely provision of all measures in healthcare and uh, uh, to provide uh, access for this information for authorized uh, medical workers in the controlled manner. What are the tasks uh, to implement electronic medical record? We need to enable all medical information to be accessible in anywhere, in any location in the world. Information should be consistent and available in full. Information should be received promptly, so there shouldn't be any delay in data entry. For example, from paper to electronic form. Information should be uh, entered in structured way from the start and uh, uh, formats should be kept as required. So you know, this information uh, will be easy to open at any time. Using uh, international vocabularies enable us uh, to keep this data interoperable in different languages. If we have uh, codes for, um, I guess, uh, diseases or uh, indications or something like that, or we can easily change uh, language and uh, all the data will be um, loaded from codes of these vocabularies in other language. So uh, this format for electronic medical records enable us to use one record in different countries for the certain patient if this patient change his location of uh, living. And this uh, information should be active. We should be able to use it for decision-making process, for example. What are the components of the electronic uh, medical records and what are their purpose? Of course, it will be integration tools. So we'll uh, need to gather all the data from different sources. And the purpose of this component will be data exchange, data management, uh, documents gathering, uh, documents conversion, and such things. After we uh, gather this data, we'll need to store it, of course. Uh, after storing, we'll be need, we will need to provide this data on request. Oh, we'll need to account which documents were stored, so it will be additional tools for keeping journals about data received. Oh, we'll need tools for patient registries to connect uh, exact patients, uh, his uh, electronic medical records with uh, appointments to the doctor, for example. And uh, portal to enable patients to access the data in person without asking medical professional to gain the success. What could be the scenarios to use uh, medical information system uh, and uh, electronic medical records? It will be provision of uh, medical care, uh, will be able to control prescriptions, uh, different medical procedures, uh, consult patients, uh, send patient a message that he need to visit his doctor in a certain time if he didn't uh, do it by himself. And uh, of course, this will increase uh, level of medical care. Another uh, scenario of use will be keeping uh, updated registries of uh, specified nosologies. So it is very important part of uh, healthcare system because uh, only ha having actual information about different types of uh, illnesses, we will be able to manage our resources and to address these uh, challenges most effectively. So we can uh, purchase our medical products, uh, 
um, hire additional doctors, provide additional facilities, something like that. Uh, another scenario will be sanitary epidemiological control, and of course, so now we understand what it means when we have coronavirus pandemic. It was very important to keep uh, numbers on uh, how many ill people we have uh, in certain region and uh, how many of them are in hospitals, uh, how many of them need uh, additional medical support, so keeping them breathing, for example, and uh, all this is being done by uh, epidemiological studies and uh, uh, getting this data, we, we are able to make prognosis on epidemiological situation in country in general and uh, to provide insights uh, should we take additional measures to keep a uh, level of uh, ill person on a certain um, in certain uh, borders for example <coughs> uh, Another scenario will be uh, control of uh, medical services provided, payments for the services, uh, drugs provided and their costs. So it's financial management and it's budgeting and it's uh, recipes uh, and all this area of activities. Uh, next will be scientific research when we can uh, find uh, some insights uh, or maybe make a breakthrough how uh, one and another conditions should be treated most effectively uh, also we will be able to provide permits for population for example it could be used in uh, different uh, mm, Permits for work when we need to make examination for the patient to enable him to work on certain positions. For example, it's required for uh, healthcare providers, for um, positions related to food supplies or something like that. And of course, it could be used in uh, uh, management and uh, control for uh, healthcare system in general, for um, Ministry of Healthcare um, licensing for medical organizations and so on. Of course, in uh, uh, electronic health records, we will have uh, certain processes in uh, data acquisition. It will be uh, receiving information, analysis, uh, entering results, uh, validation of the results. And uh, in many cases, uh, it's not enough uh, to trust one person to enter some information in uh, medical uh, record for patient. We need to enable process of uh, data entry control. And uh, in some cases, it would be for ICE principle when uh, one person enter data, another person control, is it correctly entered? And in uh, specific cases, it could be increased for six ICE principle when we have, for example, nurse entering data, doctor controlling is everything is fine. And the uh, chief of the department will examine this record and approve that it will be accepted in the system. Of course, there will be uh, not uh, only uh, digital form of data storage. For example, uh, here we can see a uh, hematology study which could be printed from the system on, base, on the basis of the data gathered. Uh, this is another uh, screenshot from the system showing uh, on uh, image uh, where one or another uh, examination was made for example what was the diagnosis and uh, there is uh, all structured data on exact case of um, medical examination uh, this is example of uh, general assessment of the patient patient uh, in his uh, medical record uh, so in uh, 
electronic medical record we have processes related to um, text data storage images storage and uh, how this uh, information is being kept so uh, this solution is an uh, some kind of integration tool for all types of information and uh, in exact record of the patient we can see um, links for these medical images and uh, it's a very easy process to go from uh, description review to exact images uh, related to the patient on this screen we can see a prescription schedule for certain medical products received by patients so it's uh, all dispenses for exact uh, patients uh, by dates uh, also when we have all the prescriptions in one system we can easily manage uh, drug to drug interactions and uh, in many cases it's impossible for doctors to track all the prescriptions uh, from all other doctors uh, in uh, one head and uh, this system could uh, help analyzing all prescriptions made to this patient and providing alerts that <clears throat> some drugs uh, uh, shouldn't be combined and uh, shouldn't be used simultaneously mm getting closer to uh, prescriptions control we will have um, electronic recipes electronic recipes uh, are similar to um, paper based uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, just a replacement of uh, paper uh, recipes and uh, introduction of digital recipes will increase uh, speed of uh, work for doctors and uh, it will they will reduce uh, medical errors when a doctor wrote something uh, not where very clear on paper and the pharmacist uh, couldn't read this uh, prescription and there could be all types of inconveniences in uh, electronic process we have uh, digital issuing of the prescription this uh, prescription is being signed signed by electronic digital signature after that it will be transferred to repository uh, later uh, this prescription could be loaded on the mobile phone from a medical information system or uh, could be printed out uh, at home by patient or at a registry desk or by doctor uh, himself and uh, with this barcode a patient uh, will be able to visit pharmacist uh, and by scanning this uh, barcode a pharmacist will mark uh, dispense of the drug and the doctor will get uh, notification that a certain patient received uh, this uh, medication and uh, in many cases it's uh, beneficial for treatment because uh, uh, it, in a very um, high amount of cases uh, patients uh, didn't uh, follow instructions provided by doctor and didn't take their medications and there is no control if it is so or not uh, another area of application is uh, electronic appointments so uh, it's also being easily done in electronic medical records uh, just combining uh, time slots uh, availability uh, of certain doctor uh, with uh, requirements from patient patients and uh, the biggest uh, challenge here is to make this process uh, working online because uh, if it will be with some um, time gaps uh, two persons could be able to make appointments at the same time and it's uh, uh, not uh, what we need from this appointment system 
there are several uh, problems in uh, prescriptions area. Mm, it's uh, not totally solved how these prescriptions could be done on uh, telemedical services, but it will be highly demanded by patients because in many cases patients receive treatment uh, mm, uh, to the end of their life and uh, uh, they will need to go to um, doctor just to renew their prescriptions and uh, in telemedical uh, consultations uh, we can limit the load on uh, healthcare system and to provide uh, more comfortable um, process for patient when they didn't need to go to the um, clinic to receive um, their prescription. Um, in some cases, uh, regional uh, medical information systems and the recipe system are not uh, combined in general system to the whole country and uh, this uh, drug dispense, dispense work only in limited number of pharmacies and medical organizations. And of course, there are, we need all the uh, required databases of for medical products lists, uh, patient lists, uh, and other to be in place uh, to use this mm, technology and to integrate all them. Uh, we get closer to mm, integration issue and uh, this uh, mm, process is being called integrated medical, uh, electronic medical record. It is just the same as uh, simple electronic medical record, but uh, uh, in integrated form, we gather all the information related to the certain patient uh, on the state level and uh, uh, there are two parts of this data, personal medical records and uh, integrated medical records. Integrated part uh, isn't, uh, isn't personalized, so uh, you can use it for uh, statistics for decision support uh, systems and other and uh, personal medical record is being used to transfer medical person uh, from one medical organization to another and uh, all these processes are being done in uh, integration process. To use this integration process, uh, we need to organize uh, protected networks, protected connections to uh, limit access to this uh, data exchange streams. For this integration to operate, uh, we need to have standards in place for data exchange, so this information would be easily loaded from one system to another. Uh, as an example, I can show uh, practice in uh, Moscow region introducing uh, such a system to raise quality and uh, accessibility of uh, medical help, or provide uh, single information uh, storage space, system optimization, uh, efficiency management, efficiency control, and uh, as effect of implementation for such a system was uh, increase in quality, uh, increase in volumes of uh, stored medical data in the system, uh, easy way to uh, add appointments to the doctors, because in Moscow region we have centralized system for appointments, it's not in the uh, one um, on the portal of medical organization, but in the centralized portal for regional healthcare system. And this uh, reduce waiting time for persons, so there are no queries, and uh, uh, in general, our patients became more happy after introduction of these services. Uh, under the hood of the system, we have uh, patient flow control, uh, workstations for doctors, uh, medicine, telemedicine services, uh, laboratory services, uh, instrumental diagnostic integration subsystems, uh, drug prescription subsystem, analytical subsystem, monitoring uh, centers, uh, accounting centers, and uh, all what we are talking about today. So it's a good example of implementation.
Of course, there will be uh, a lot of uh, risks which we need to consider when we introduce such a technology. Uh, lots of them are connected with uh, security issues. So patients are worried about how this medical data will be used. And uh, uh, in some cases, uh, this uh, worries are based on uh, discrimination provided by their uh, employees, uh, their employers, uh, when they could have access for this uh, professional medical examination results and uh, limit uh, one or another person from some job positions if uh, he or she have certain medical conditions and uh, uh, it's an open question how it should be managed because uh, in many organizations uh, employees agree to pass this uh, medical checkups um, From the technical part, uh, side of the question, uh, we have uh, a lot of additional issues to manage this uh, safety um, risks and uh, of course they should be um, addressed. Of course, benefits of uh, electronic medical records and uh, medical information systems in, gen in general are much higher than the risks which we face here. It's impossible right now to use uh, handwritten forms and uh, I guess uh, general public understands that this format of data exchange is uh, unacceptable nowadays. And uh, of course, it's... Uh, question of uh, time you know, when all the mm, paperwork in healthcare will be replaced with uh, electronic records. So solving the issues of uh, standardization, security, uh, common terminology, uh, common data exchange formats, uh, uh, all the mm, processes in healthcare will be automated in uh, medical information systems and electronic medical records. Thank you, it's all for today.